So let me see. I hope you are interested from the the problems or let's say the problems related to the this is one. Just a second. To the NPI, for instance. So I think I'm running out of space. I'm actually cleaning right now, but probably it was too late. So I'll try to build it on my computer instead. Uh, I will just build a really simple uh, container. So that will actually address the snake make uh, a problem. Camille is uh, interested. So let's say if I create a file which is learn dev. And it is really simple. Let's see, let's remove the complications. Ah, this So what I've been interested in this particular case is uh, this S view, which is graphical tool to show the uh, queue manager or the status of the jobs on my on the queue manager. But that's not available on Rackham and trying to compile that one is kind of painful. So instead of that one, I will, uh, let's try. I mean, we do it live. So I will try to run it on a later. And uh, Slurm comes with this package. So this will give me S batch, SQ, S run, and everything else. But let's see what we get. So let's see. This is my pseudo. Let's call it Slurm. Why? I have a rule that actually skips asking me for passwords if I use singularity with Zoom. Hopefully that will be fast. So what I'm building is a really simple container which has all the SRAM, S batch, uh, SQ, the S the Slurm manager. Uh, comments and I will show you what are the problems and if you want to follow actually a little bit this is the, the recipe I used is here I see that Camille is uh, leaving, but I will try to make my point really fast. So this was uh, perfectly fine compiled uh, to my computer. I will just bring it on Rackham and I, I'm not creative. So I will just put it on, um, what you call it, in my home folder. Okay, so now, okay, am I still cleaning? I need another Rackham then. Right, so this should be here in my own folder. So if I start it, I will get a bash a, a shell in the container. Uh, you shouldn't be uh, surprised that I don't have anything about the modules because it tries to source something that is not in the. But now let's see, I will keep that one, it's not finished. Okay, another Rackham to show you what happens if I'm outside. Okay, so if I do SQ, you will get, it's a lot of output, but uh, let me see if I pipe it to less minus S capital, then you will recognize this is the jobs that are currently queuing. And for whatever reason, those are running and etc. Now this is Rackham on the host. Then I'm here in the singularity and I will run SQ. So you see what's the problem. I have the command, but I'm inside the container. 
and the information to communicate with the uh, with the queue manager is by a definition of files which exists in if you jump one back i will show you that is on the host so here i'm back on the raka less and then if you look this is on the physical machine and it's the slurm configuration so if i open it there is a lot of stuff there but essentially it's defining which computer is where how much is uh, allowed to run uh, limits batch start timeout things like that everything related to the uh, cluster to the slurm queue manager now that's not enough i need to bring it but because this is on centos and i don't know even how it is installed this configuration file inside the container resides in a different location so to make that one working i'm back from the container i need to run it in this this awkward way which is very close to what pedro was suggesting that there is this binding mode in which you bring the MPI uh, libraries and tools from the host inside the container. Now that doesn't help with the, uh, the executable, but in this case, we don't have that problem. So what happens is I bring this configuration file and I mount it on top of the one that inside the container is expecting to be. So this is a lot of digging and has nothing to do with, uh, with uh, singularity. This, you have to do it even in Docker or anything, just to make the link between the real host configuration to bring it inside the container. Now that's not enough. You, some information is kept in this run, which contains the running processes. And then it turns out that actually in this particular case, you need something which is called writable TMP file system. So you are pushing a little bit the container but let's see if that will help. Now I'm in sight, but now if I look on this file, which is the location inside the container, I should see, uh, of course, we don't have less in this container. So let's see more. Yeah, all of a sudden I have that one. And if it's properly, okay, I hope they didn't change anything between Ubuntu 20 and 22, SQ, no, why you never, one need, never needs to, shouldn't change to 20. Let me see if I run it this way, where is this file now? Yeah, because it's not there. Where is slur? I don't know even where to start on. That will take time to debug it. So let's see. I will, in a desperate attempt, I will try to rebuild that one really fast and hope for the best. But I will try to explain meanwhile. What happens is if you're in this container, right now it's obvious, I don't have MPI run. I have no idea how to run MPI from inside the container. So my container should have MPI run if I want to run uh, MPI programs. That's something that Pedro was giving an example with. The, uh, and I'm bringing MPI just the way of thinking. If you project that one to snake make, now you can have snake make inside the container, but when the container sent, uh, says, or the rule in the snake make says, submit that, that one to the queue manager, it doesn't first, it, does, it needs the S, uh, S the slurm uh, binaries. Or, or. And the second one is, okay, in this case, we don't care about the MPI, but the slurm manager or the client should know how to communicate back to the queue manager on the cluster. So let's say if we can do that one, yes. 
second, okay? Good, so let's try that one now. Uh, this is something I don't want to do. Let's see. Please. Oh. No jobs there. Yes. Okay, that was life, but yeah, I have problems communicating with the queue manager. So this solution won't work. Uh, it might be because it was obtainer or something, but I need to revise, uh, review that one. Otherwise, S view would have given me everything graphically, and it was essentially would have communicated nicely with uh, Slurp. This means I need to revisit it, and uh, I will probably add it as a study case. Uh, now, if I'm back to the uh, to the snake make. So presumably one can install the Slurm client in the container, and then you can bind the configurations such that they are available inside the container. Then one can start inside the container and send bit jobs to the queue manager. Now keep in mind that the queue manager, when it submits the job, it will not doesn't it will not know anymore anything about the container on where it was submitted because that's the other one if you submit a file if it's in the home folder it's fine because the host and the slurm manager will find them and it will be executed etc but if you want still to be executed inside the container it means that the task that you submit to the queue manager should be run. Yeah, you can do that trick actually inside the container itself on the new job. So, I mean, I, I think I will need a simple example that runs uh, say on the host or something that I can wrap in the container and submit it from a container and uh, to run. It's a challenging. The easiest way, if you think in this way, is like all the problems in this situation is that I need to bring the communication to the Slurm client inside the container. And if you take the other approach, which is I will sit outside the container, then everything works there. The, the Slurm client works because it's configured to work. MPI works because it's configured to work. Uh, what is missing, modules is working. So I have actually the host is perfect. Snake make is uh, easily configured with uh, Conda. And then that one runs on the bare hardware, let's say. It's not a single file anymore. It takes a little bit more preparations, but when you run, then you avoid figuring out how to talk to the Slurm manager because that's already pre-configured. You only say that task to run in a container. So you end up actually with a setup, a regular setup, like everything else, and a container, which ensures that everything you run in a task will be run in the container. It's like for reprodu reproducibility purposes. So that is, uh, I can show you a pile of solution like that done with Nextflow and uh, Nextflow uh, pile I can't do with Snake Maven. Uh, they publish all the recipes on a, um, it's a GitHub, but they have a tool how to fetch them. And there is a command which says even like pre-download all the containers. And they're set up, pre-set up either locally for the task or you can centralize the download them. That's what we are doing on Rackham. So that's the way you get it on Bianca as well. So if you use one of these predefined recipes, which are really Git clone, they know where to find uh, the containers offline. So essentially the whole purpose is that uh, when users uh, run on Bianca where you don't have internet, they have already everything preset. The containers are there. The next flow is actually, yeah, I have to say that uh, it's a really it's something I like. It's a single executable. 
it is actually a container, Java container. That's how they do it to avoid uh, the snake make uh, file distributed one way or another. So they are kind of comparable. Uh, I would prefer next flow in my, uh, but we will not talk about these details. But I don't like Java, so essentially they are on par. Snake make is, uh, I don't know, next flow is just one download and etc. But uh, they will suffer the same way. If I put next flow in a singularity, still next flow doesn't know how to talk to the uh, queue manager. So you have to keep in mind from where things are orig originating. So that's why I'm saying that if you're on a single node, if you say MPI run on that node, you have the MPI presumably inside the container. He doesn't know to, everything is running on local host. Moving on another machine is again local host, no problem. Now, the moment when you need to run on another machine, what happens is your MPI is inside the container. That MPI behind the scenes actually starts a uh, process on the new machine. Now, inside the container, you might not even know where is that machine. Let's assume again that uh, you, uh, the way on Rackham it is done, you know that there is R1, R2, R3, R4. So it could easily essentially say, start a process there. The problem is that when it starts, the MPI original is in a container. So this is how we end up with this ugly fix. And uh, uh, Pedro gave credits to me, but it's not. I think it's uh, one of the centers found the solution. Essentially, it's this part. So what happens is, is with this one, you say run MPI from the container, but once you're out, you say the next time when you jump on a new machine, the agent, this is the one that uh, like a spider, or the new agent, I would say, <laughs> it should be run the same way I've been run this MPI run but then you start this ortent or whatever demon side. So it's really gets complicated. So that is MPI. Snake make is the same. Even if you manage to submit, once it ends on the other node, it should know, shall I jump inside of the container? Where did I came from? And things like that. So it is easier to sit multiple times outside because you can easily address multiple nodes the way it is the regular HPC cluster setup. And once you end up on the remote, then you can say, okay, now use the container. Instead of using a direct command, you just put singularity exec or run. So three parameters in front of your command and then everything is running smoothly. Now, of course, that's for the cost, for the beauty of having everything in a single file. I have to admit it, but the cost is one way or another. You will never get away from this problem that I'm trying to fix now and I will figure it out, but you need to bring the information for the Slurm insight. You might end up with this extra processes that they need to be also injected inside the container. Who else, who knows else what it could be happening? But, so I will stop here and I will see uh, if, if, if you have questions about that one. You can even say this is completely fuzzy or- There is one on the chat. Let me see. I'm not sure whatever I understand. So, all right. So NPRN Singularity works for Slurm while Singularity NPRN will generate different jobs in Slurm. So let me see. Okay, <clears throat> I will narrow down the discussion to uh, Rackham, for instance. Uh, being on one of the nodes, for instance, I'm here. You might not be able to do that one, but I'm doing like SSH to R3. I'm not doing anything special. You will, you can do the same, except that you will be kicked back because you haven't reserved that node. 
but uh, it didn't ask me for a password because jumping between nodes on Rackham is done by what is called uh, host key authentication. It means that uh, on R3, the log machines are any other machine in the cluster. So each machine has a signature, even your laptop or computer has a signature of the host. So they have exchanged these host signatures, which means that if I know that guy, they are allowed to connect. I will not ask for passwords, which is excellent. Except that when you are inside the container and you want to SSH to R3, the signature, which I, I mean, usually when I SSH from the login node, the way it authenticates is I'm bringing that, um, how can I say, that signature, but that's done by root. Because if I can, if I have access to that key, I can copy. So you see the problem. If I'm in the container, I can't do that one anymore because I don't have access to that key, which is facilitated by the host system. So when I try to do that from the container, let's try. We can try to do it. I can still get into the Slurm container and I can try S, uh, S R3. Uh, I the message here. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you need an SSH client. Uh, I can build that one as well, but uh, let's, shall we do it? Or now it's, uh, that point is. Uh... Okay, let's see that one. What I will want to illustrate is all of a sudden, the other node on the other side will say, no, I don't know who you are, give me a password. But that one you can't do if you do an MPI run. Imagine you run thousand nodes, you need to provide thousand times the password. Uh, it won't, you might try to trick it with uh, keys. That one is also tricky sometimes, so. You need to find a balance and may, I mean, to try to understand what is the limitation. So by having the container, you're giving up on services that are running on the host. Now if there, so let me try to illustrate that one if I manage. I'm not sure that I will be convincing with that, but I will try anyway. So I copy that one, let's see. Okay, I'm back on Rackham, I sit now Slurm should have SSH. Yeah, let's say yes. Yeah, but it says it recognized some um, keys, but now it asked me for a password. So I can't do any more the trick that I've been, I didn't need to do it because it was a cluster that trusts that you can jump between computers, as long as it's between the computers. And this is how you run MPI. Because, yeah, I'm sitting on the login node and I'm saying run it on this, this cluster and then it will fire this, uh, what it was called, we called it agents. But to start the agent remotely, I need to connect to that machine. So having this host authentication, it's a zero efforts. But now I lose that one. Okay, I will not push that one because uh, ideally what we were talking, this is supposed to be a beginners. What I will bring is something that uh, what we call it as a questions that at this point you don't see that are a problem. And that one is something that I will mention. You will probably, most of you will not understand uh, the purpose. I will try to explain. Let me see where is this good and bad. Send you the link. But in the previous feedback from the course, we have uh, participants highly appreciating that uh, part of the material. So those are a few tricks that you need to keep in mind or to be aware at least. Now. When you start to, let me see, I need to figure out what is uh, exactly. 
if you want to compile a code, what is a good place to put it? Now, keep in mind when you run sudo singularity build, that runs with sudo. And depending how it is configured, it might actually mount the home folder of root. This is really dangerous. So putting that one by dollar home might end up actually in your root folder. And from there, many things can go wrong. Uh, that is quite common solution for Docker. Usually if you don't specify a user, Docker will run as root. And if you run, uh, you want to install some Conda, you install Conda and then that goes under root in the home folder as root. You have all the profiles there, et cetera, et cetera. If you try to replicate that one under singularity, it gets really, really messy. At the same time, if you take one of these Docker, which the software is installed under root, or some system folders inappropriate, you can't get access because you're not root when you run on Rackham or your computer, the singularity. So we, we've seen a couple of messed up uh, dockers like that. At the same time, nothing wrong. No one intended to be running a singularity. So the solution works in Docker, but those are kind of examples where you can't convert it straight away because you're supposed to run or the tools were supposed, uh, are set up to run as root and you can't do that one yet. And most of the things doesn't need to run as root. You can run a web server. There is a simple example as, as a regular user, database also as a regular users. You can run pretty much everything without being a root. The meaning of the administrative privileges is to actually restrict access or control access. It's like reserving ports after 2024 on the post machine, things like that. So most of the solutions, you can do it, but not as the way they were originally designed to be installed on your computer. So one of the examples will be also the system control daemon. That one is not running because if you boot your laptop, there is a, in the, sequence, there is one place where this one will be started and that will be one by one starting another demons. That is nowhere. Remember, you have a run script. You might think that this is the place where you want to start the demon, but it, it's not the way. It's not intended to be this way. So this is where it starts to sharply deviate from what you can do in Docker. But I think even in Docker, you are not aiming to run anything as a system daemon and things like that. Okay, so one of my uh, suggestions is something that I do is actually when I start, I create a folder which is under root and I jump inside. I can git clone, I can download with vget or aria or anything you can find. You can make, you can compile, install, and at the end you can delete. And with this, you will delete everything you have been set or downloaded or pre-copied or anything in this folder. Because at some, uh, when you finish building, we haven't done it until now, but you you are keeping the downloaded packages from the apt get inside the container, which is wasteful. There is no particular reason why they should be there. So you will see one of these, what I call finished or working uh, uh, containers. Somewhere at the end, there contain something like removing the folders, deleting the cache. And I will show you another one. When you install pip, you can say don't cache anything. That is to reduce the size. Usually when you're a beginner, you don't start with that one, but later you start to appreciate that you get a larger C file just because you didn't write a couple of comments at the end. Right. Conda. Now, this is the first time I'm saying that uh, 
you can you remember i mean not, not remember but until now we were pulling ubuntu and then we pretend that we install everything like the same way as we do it on a laptop because it was easy for me to claim at least that you're familiar with that but when it's time for conda and this is also a solution that we've done for a um, support request you can actually download it is actually uh, on the back is uh, ubuntu based in most cases but it's a mini conda from the developers distribution on uh, docker hub on which conda is already pre-installed you can actually here even specify which version you have you have to check which are tax or which labels are available but if you don't specify any, anything you get the latest so you have already a container that you can start and it has conda pre-installed so this is something that you have to rec you re recognize i have that one just in case also when i start installing and what i'm doing is just following what was the installation instructions so for this particular case, after a couple of years, nothing looks the same. So we needed to actually fix these versions to make it working. But what happens is, yeah, at the end, I even dare to do conda clean or I define something which looks like this. And this is the solution which I told you and mentioned before. When you run scripts, you don't run bash. You're running this uh, stripped down shell. So what happens is I get all the parameters in a variable. And then I hope you're familiar with this, which means that I will run bash and I will execute every single line in between end of file. Usually it means between this line and this line. So now at that point, I have bash. Now I know how to do it. I will source. So conda becomes active. And then I will conda activate my environment. And then the goal is to start a program which is called MetalRap. If you are bioinformaticians, there is a good chance that you've been, you, you know about the tool or you've heard about it. Now, what is the reason in this particular case? Uh, let me see if I find it. Uh, you, you can install it in the base environment and you can skip the activation. It was the problem that the dependency of this was pulling an older Python version. And that would have made absolute mess in the base environment. So that's why it is wrapped. Now, the, why this is beautiful? or why this is better than actually having this metal wrap environment. It is a single file. You can keep it on a USB stick and run it any, anywhere where it could, it's compatible. You can send it to your colleagues. They don't have to uh, care for anything. And actually, if you call that uh, container metal wrap, you can actually execute metal wrap and pass the parameters, and this will run inside the conda environment. Can't get better than that, I can tell you. Now, it is an effort, but once it is done, it's easy to change small details. And then it is, uh, how can I say? Many things can go wrong, but this will still work until you have uh, appropriate hardware. So this kind of solution we've done, for instance, on uh, Tetralit, or I think even in the HPC 2N, uh, there is no Python 2 anymore. And with Conda, you can bring Python 2. But with this uh, setup, you can actually hide Python 2 so deeply that no one else will realize that you're running Python 2. OK, the very same setup you can do it with Ubuntu and then you see how it balloons. And it is only because up to here, I'm doing what is already built inside the Conda uh, Docker container. So you're wasting your efforts. 
and I have something else later, which is unnecessary, the rest is the same. So you will recognize like downloading Miniconda, making it executable, installing it, and this is you provide it on the location, otherwise it will ask you where to put it, et cetera, accepting the user agreement, things like that. And then you make some symbolic links, et cetera. This is all unnecessary. When you download Ubuntu, you don't even get, you don't have VGET and Git. It is so slim down. You get many things that it's unnecessary. Shortly questions if you have about the Conda. Okay, then I will bring the other one. Python. PIP is really easy, actually. Many tools you don't need a single article for that. But if for some reason you want to do that one, you want to install with apt get Python 3 development, which will bring uh, some uh, headers and uh, libraries necessary to build. And uh, some of the packages doesn't come pre-built, you need to compile them. So it's good to have also uh, built essential. That is, uh, I think, I'm not sure what's the equivalent of uh, Red Hat based. And then I don't have that one, I can show you though. So we'll build here. This was from another installation and the instructions say, in one single line, you can do something as simple. This is BCF tools, plugins. And if you go at the end, you have one, two, in this case, two files, two down, three files, perhaps. Let me see, I can figure out what it is. Uh, echo. So bash, it will expand that one to three files. So on a single line, we get will download three files. Not if you do it with the SH, which doesn't work in uh, during the build of the single art. So this is a way how you actually start a bash and execute these commands. So this gets properly expanded. Keep in mind, sometimes something as obvious as that line, I mean, will generate an error which sounds unusually. It will print there is no such file, and you, uh, if I am correct, you can't even figure out why, because the file is there. You can download it, you can do it on the command line on the machine, but not from the container. This is the trick that I most commonly use. Uh, you've seen me that, for instance, if I rebuild now this local, the very first that we started, I will start fetching the indexes and I will start installing, but this will download Fortune, Cose, Lowcard, and I added Git. I was experimenting. So every time you do that one, it will start to re-download these packages. Now, if you download Latte or Paraview or a large installation, and if you do that one on a slow network, it will slow you down too much. I mean, it, you, you get nervous because you're doing the same things. What even gets worse, I will mention, but that's on the next step. But one remedy that I found, and this is the least because Everything else assumes that you can have a proxy or cache solutions that needs to be set up separately on the machine you're building. Instead of that one, there is a small trick that you can create a folder in your physical slash TMP. That's a trick, but you have to be careful. When you build, you mount the home folder, you mount the TMP folder by default. So it means that I can leave stuff in slash TMP and next time when I build, it will be still there. 
So what is the idea is that I want to tell the APT uh, package manager that there is a cache to use in slow uh, TMP APT. And I put that one in the configuration file inside the container. So when I do update and I install packages, those will be downloaded and stored in slash TMP slash APT, the one that I choose. So next time I do it because I figure out I need to put another two. It will still fetch the indexes. You can't get away from that. But when it says, okay, install these tools, it will say, ah, I have them in the cache. So if you have a bunch like 10 gigabytes to download, this time it's no, everything is here. I start to install directly. So that is saving a lot of time and bandwidth. Keep in mind, I pretty much, when I said, I showed you this uh, R solution, that is using the same trick. I'm using it always. I'm kind of lazy to do the sandboxing <laughs> to figure out solutions. So I always start with clean build and I hope that it will be built in one shot. If it fails, I start again. So, which brings me to large downloading large files. And that's another example. You can trust me that this FASTA file is rather large. And what is even worse, that was from this project that I mentioned that we've been running for three, uh, three months to build. If you start downloading that file from the FTP server, it works the first time. It works the second time you do it. The third time you will get throttled down. So they will limit the speed that you can download. Next time it will be even slower. And you find that probably on the fifth or sixth time, they will even ban you. All of a sudden, you can't download anymore that file. So you are stuck until probably the next day because your IP has been banned and you can't do anything about it. But you can do the same trick. You can create, I call it like a temporary folder for downloads. I create the folder. And okay, in this, uh, probably there are names that might uh, talk something to you, but that was chromosome 37 and CR, GR, I don't know what I forgot. But with VGET, you can say that download it in the, this folder that we predefined. Minus C means continue or try again from where it's finished. Now, if the whole file is already there, it says nothing to do and it will skip. And this is brilliant. And you think that you cheated the system and then you realize for whatever reason, and you never see that one. If you follow the instructions, the next step is to G and zip the file. Unfortunately, that's something that you don't see that produces uh, an error back to the shell. Nothing on the screen, but the program returns that there was an error during the extraction. Nothing wrong with the file, nothing is. So the only way that I, well, not the only way, one way to avoid that one, because if I run that one up to here, the build will break because it says, okay, last comment, there was an error, so I stop. This is a bash comment which says, execute that or that. And it's enough one of them to be successful to assume that the whole line was successful. And true is always successful, which is a dangerous, which means that I don't care what will happen here, just continue further. So that's one way of, if you know what you're doing, that there is a problem or partial downloads or things like that, you're recovering partial things like that, and you say, just continue. This is the way to do it. One way. Okay. It's the same with BWA too. When it does the indexes, it does the indexes, everything, but for whatever reason, the result from that action is false or that there was an error. It 
stops building. So you, it, now you can see why it took three months. It was so many problems to solve. Well, we were less experienced as well. Uh, I have some more warnings. Our libraries. Okay, for that one, questions. Well, feel free at any point to uh, interrupt. Okay. This is a minimum setup I showed you. You've seen it be before. And it just uh, illustrates how you can get our base. You don't get much more. You don't get our desktop or anything, but you get the text mode for the R. And this is absolutely nothing unusual. If you follow the, the instructions on the web pages, how to install it, probably I need to point to the source. This is, it's copy paste, nothing. You just add a repository. Those are provided by the R project. So you get something which is better than what you get inside the Ubuntu Docker. You have the crown mirror. Ah, I'm lying. You have some R Studio here. You need to have this, and that was actually, it's not necessary anymore. But if you install that guy, you still need <laughs> this fix. That was the time when things didn't work. Then you can do it even like as lazy as that one. R script install package reticulate. There was a question in the chat before. It was related about how to install Bioconductor. Uh, that will be the case. If not, ask me explicitly or send a support ticket or just drop me a mail. I will, because Bioconductor, or if you have time, I, I will dig it out. I will show you how we, uh, on an early stage, we've done it so you can have hints. I don't have the final solution because uh, uh, for sensitive data, I was not allowed to participate to the entire project. So I had chunks to solve. Right. Here is uh, compiling a code. Uh, if you compile a code, you have to manually resolve the library dependence. That's inevitable. Installing from apt-get, that's easy. Pip, it's easy. It will pull all the dependencies. I mean, our packages, it's will do. When you compile, you have to find and uh, install the dependencies manually. Uh, one solution, we had a problem, with, not a problem, but uh, it's easy when you install packages you get the pre uh, not pre yeah it's pre compiled you get the distribute distributed packages already compiled but if you want to compile for the sources that might not be enough you might need to install development versions of different libraries now that will add space on the container so if you are after a small container that you want to distribute for whatever reasons you don't want to keep these versions of the development, which is which are the extra. So there is a way to install libraries, like for instance, in this particular case, I say that my dependencies to make to be able to build something, we get git make c make gcc g plus plus g fortran. I install it and I say don't install anything that the package recommends. Those are not strict requirements. They are just recommendations. The story, the reason is that later I can say how to remove. And I say, remove these guys and it will remove out to any other dependence that were brought together. And I will be only left with, in this case, mess uh, utils. This is where you will really it's details, but I'm mentioning it. So if you just come to a, an idea that, okay, how it was done or is it possible to be done or was there a complication, you can look here. That is what I mentioned. I forgot where you can find it, but I told you that some programs uh, have like um, 
for the GTK I say GTK version five has function calls to the kernel, and those doesn't work for uh, with the kernel that is older, like one in the um, on Raka. It might work without problem on Abisco or for HPCN on Kepnekaise, but if you want to be sure or you are stuck. Try to build from Debian 9 or from Ubuntu 18.04. This is old, but if this is the solution, you got it. I, I will ask for questions because the next one is I will give you a really nice trick that I'm using heavily because that brings uh, my use of singularity to another level. Until now, I hope I kind of convinced you what are the features. Uh, what I'm afraid is I scared you a little bit that there are too many problems. But uh, I'll try to compensate for this. Okay. Remember, I showed you something on Rakan. I have a collections here, and I will, in this case, I will go to bin. I will paste that one in the chat. Metal utils. Uh, that will be, uh, are we talking about, uh, okay, I will speculate if I know exactly. I think uh, what we are talking is that meta packages or utils, it's like uh, you can at least in CentOS or um, Mesa utils, yeah, then, it's, <laughs> then I know what we're talking. Uh, that is uh, drivers for the um, um, graphical interface. So some of the 3D rendering engines, uh, they might use NVIDIA or some drivers, but if you don't have them, those are uh, utils that gives you a software rendering. It's not as fast, it's not as powerful, but at least makes your program running. So many of these uh, tools sometimes require Mesa, but if you install it from the APT, you might even not notice that they've been pulled out. If you compile, you might end up actually with something that needs the drivers to render uh, on the screen. It is a leftover. To be honest, I, I'm not, yeah, it's, it, it says actually install packages needed for OpenGL. So this is, uh, I can give you even probably, uh, my suspicion is VMD. I don't know what stands for uh, visual molecular uh, dynamics. It's a very popular uh, graphical interface and has plugins behind so you can perform molecular dynamics, etc. And that one, if it finds that you have a GPU on the computer, it will use the GPU. But if it doesn't and you run it over SSH, it needs this driver, Mesa Utils. It comes with this driver, so it will render. It will be choppy, it won't be as responsive as the other, but it will work. Okay, so let me show you how it looks like here. That will look a little bit messy, but what do you, you can recognize, or let's say? There is a lot of files which are symbolic links, and all of them are pointing to the same Ubuntu 2204. This starts to be suspicious. Remember, I told you you can specify one run script, but how about if that script actually asks what command you ask me to run? Essentially, this is a trick used by another program. There are many programs nowadays. You can ask what was the name when you called me and if I use symbolic links let me see let's take if I start the Ubuntu see if I just get a there is an error but if I start putty and this is a Windows problem but you will recognize it under Linux It calls the container and the container says, okay, you call me with putty, I will look for a, or putty TI. 
I will look for such executable and run it if, if there is such. Okay, there is such. It's the same with, if I go with XZ. And let me show you what I mean also. Uh, if I do version, that is in the container. And of course the system also have the XZ. So you see, I can easily use different versions. I think I have even R sync. Let me see. If for whatever reason, and probably this one goes with the version. Okay, let's stick to that one. This comes from the container. And if I ask what is the system one, it means, let's see. Yeah, 31 versus, what is it? It's the same, three, two. Okay, so somebody been updating that one. I want something which is, let me see. Oh, then you can see the differences. The inside has optimizations. The outside doesn't have the same optimizations. So the other one can use different LZ4, ZLIP. The other one, you have no idea what they can do. Right, how this was done? It's an easy trick. I think you will be able to reproduce it if you want. Let me see, that will be advanced. Indirect calls, that's what I call it. And I made the example for bioinformatician tools, like uh, some tools, BCF tools, bow tie, and etc. So I will really work out really fast. Docker, I'm using Ubuntu 204, same environment. I made non interactive. I create cache so I can fastly rebuild if I want. I install without recommendation, vget, unzip, git, bin, and all the tools. And this is what I will run if I call the container. The trick is here. Singularity name. If I call it with putty, it will think that the container is called putty and it will try to execute the, the, the name of the container, which in this case was putty and the parameters I provide. If not, it will just produce an error. So to be complete, what I've done is you can list what are the executables that come with these tools and automatically create Okay, this is called some tools. So ACE to some, BCS to blast, bow tie. So if I use them, I can run these tools inside the container with zero efforts, and they will run in environment of Ubuntu 2004. I don't rely anymore on the system. The system might not have any of these tools, bow tie, BCS to some tools, I'm independent and I can have it on my disposal. So here is, for instance, a tool that is missing in one of the nodes. Let's say, have you seen, you, you asked me about that one. Let me see, but here, actually that doesn't look to the container. I have compiled that one, it doesn't need, I mean, it's a small tool. So it that didn't need to be compiled, but for instance, Oak, I like Oak. The system Oak is, let's see, 402. I mean, 2012, yeah, probably we can do better. 5.10 with multi-precision, who I forgot the, but then you have all the libraries. 2020, that's not the latest, 5.2 will be later. And now that one I installed it only with apt get in the container and I made a symbolic link, let's see. 
it points to that folder. So let me reveal, if you get one of these, you can just run singularity inspect minus D Ubuntu, and let's see what's hidden inside. Docker, Ubuntu 20.04 as well, as I said. I don't copy any files. I don't do any setup. You know that one. You know that one. You know this trick I've shown you. And I have a long that installs everything I think I will need, which means if you want to use a ARIA on Rackham, that's not installed. No problem. I can have it in the container. You can have melt. That one is also not installed. No problem. You can have you can have Inkscape. You can have tools that you are used to in Ubuntu, and everything is. And I'm installing a couple of other tools like with Dust, Brute, doesn't matter. And the last lines which do the trick. The rest is just symbolic links. Then I don't need. Okay. You can do it this way. Singularity exec Ubuntu TTI. This will run to TTI the way it is as before. But how nice is I have a symbolic link which does that for me. So literally, you can load that one into the path with loading a module, which is called PM tools. But I'm so used to directly point them to the folders that I, I that's the same. 7-zip is not available as long as I know it in the Rackham. Right. If you're curious, there are a little bit more here. Which is there, what happens? There is this collection of singularity containers that I mentioned, PyTorch and TensorFlow in the readme. And there are a couple of virtual environments and Conda environments that I'm sharing, but they are kind of on demand. They are not documented because they have limited audience. Right. I've been talking too much and I've been telling you stuff that I assume you're interested. Now it will be beneficial if you tell me what you're interested in. We try to answer the questions. <laughs>